For over a year now, if you wanted to get in on the new generation of powerful, slick, handheld computers, you pretty much had only one choice, the Apple iPhone. But starting next week, that's all going to change because the iPhone will finally have a worthy competitor. Hi, this is Walt Mossberg, personal technology columnist for the Wall Street Journal. And today I want to talk about what I consider to be the second entry in this new category of powerful pocket-sized computers that began uh, in 2007 with the iPhone. And this new entry is the T-Mobile G1, which was uh, a, is a phone that was designed and uh, really uh, invented at Google. Now, uh, the G1 will go on sale next Wednesday for $179. It's about $20 less than the least expensive iPhone. And with a monthly plan that is also less and gives you more uh, on T-Mobile than what uh, AT&T gives you uh, on the iPhone. Uh, the G1 uh, is, uh, as I said, in the category, in my opinion, of the iPhone. And what I mean by that is it has a really robust new from the design from the ground up operating system called the Android. Uh, it has a slick a well thought out touch uh, user interface uh, and it has a, uh, a, a third party application store uh, so it's really a platform for, de for developers. Um, but it's uh, very different from the iPhone and I think it's going to attract a different group of customers. Probably its biggest differentiator is that the G1 has a physical keyboard. Uh, the keyboard slides out or appears from under the screen when you slide the screen up and um, you know I believe that there have been uh, lots of people who've wanted to get into this category of device but since the iPhone was really their only choice um, they really had to be willing to learn to type on glass because the iPhone only has a virtual keyboard and there are lots of people that were unwilling or unable to do that uh, the G1 is going to give them that option because it has a physical keyboard. Uh, in my tests of the G1, which have been intensive and extensive and have gone on in multiple cities, uh, I found the keyboard to be only fair. It's uh, not nearly as good as, for instance, some of the BlackBerry keyboards. It's got kind of flat keys. It's a little hard to see in bright light, and it, it has a kind of... Uh, a bulging part of the body of the phone that you have to get your thumb over on one side to type. But it is usable and for uh, keyboard folks uh, it's a much better option than uh, what the iPhone offers. And now there are some other strengths and weaknesses to the G1. Um, uh, among the strengths are uh, it's tightly integrated with Google. If you are use Google email, uh, use Google contacts, use Google Calendar online this phone is just like a physical extension of those things. In fact, you can't even use the phone unless you have a Google ID and password. Uh, but that's also, for some other folks, a downside. That's the only way you can get calendar items and contacts uh, into the G1 phone. You cannot use Microsoft Exchange. You cannot use uh, other kinds of online calendars and contacts like those maintained by, uh, say, Yahoo. Uh, and you also can't synchronize anything uh, directly from a PC or a Mac. So you can't synchronize directly from Outlook, can't synchronize directly from, uh, say, Apple's uh, iCal calendar program or its address book. Um, but the G1 has uh, lots of cool features. Its touch interface is very clever. Uh, it has a kind of slide-up drawer thing at the bottom where all your applications appear. If you get a notification at the top of the screen that you have voicemail or email or something that has arrived, you can just slide it down with your finger and you see more details about it. Um, it uh, allows you to customize your desktop in a way that's much more flexible and personal uh, uh, than the iPhone. You can put contacts on there. You can put your favorite photos, and I don't just mean for wallpaper, but you can put them on there like... Uh, uh, little widgets you can put individual uh, websites. There's a bunch of things you can do, uh, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. It has uh, a lot of cool uh, features. It has a better camera than the iPhone, and 
and so forth. It also, however, has some downsides. Unlike the iPhone, you cannot just flip the G1 and have a photo or a web page change from portrait to landscape view. You cannot flick with your finger through photos. Uh, you cannot pinch a photo to reduce it or uh, move your fingers apart to uh, in increase it. And in general, I thought the user interface was a little clumsier in the sense that uh, there are more functions for which you need to go to a menu, whereas on the iPhone, some of those func same functions are just easily tappable uh, right in front of you on the, on the screen. Um, the G1 uh, runs like the iPhone does on 3G and on Wi-Fi. It also has GPS and Bluetooth. Uh, I tested it in a number of cities around the country on T-Mobile's new 3G network. Uh, it worked uh, fine. Uh, in my speed tests, it was a little slower than the iPhone, but in my battery tests uh, on talk time, it lasted a little longer than the iPhone. Um, the network is uh, probably a disadvantage on balance, and that's only because T-Mobile is just getting into the 3G business. We all know AT&T has had a lot of problems with their 3G network that iPhone customers have experienced, but it is, at least to some extent, present in 320 metro areas, and the T-Mobile network will only be present uh, next week in 20 metro areas in the U.S., expanding to about 28 by year end. So uh, overall, I think the G1 is a good device that will attract a somewhat different audience from uh, the iPhone, but it's a worthy, worthy competitor. It's only the first device with Google's new phone operating system, Android. You're going to see a lot of others. And uh, it's great for consumers that there are now two of these powerful new types of handheld smartphones or handheld computers on the market. This is Walt Mossberg, and I'll see you next week.